Hello and welcome to Wet Study Friends. So as always, I'm once again up with a new video. And in this video, as many of you have asked me to post an interview of for some selected RVC candidates. So today I have with me Captain. Yes, now he is Captain. And uh, I present you Captain uh, Aishman Tiwari. And he is with us. And today he'll tell us about his journey, how he decided to do SSB, how he decided to join army and how he feels now when he has finally cracked this exam and is officially an army person. So I welcome Dr. and Captain Aishman Tiwari to my channel. कैसा लग रहा है कैप्टन बनके? Thank you so much for inviting me here. It's actually an honor. Uh, it's uh, really uh, actually wonderful. Being honest, from the start of my degree back in 2017, every veterinarian I think जो हमारी इस फील्ड में उतरता है somewhere in the back of their mind कि there is no better job for a veterinarian rather than an army job. To wear that uniform, have the prefix of captain. I think it's very rare and it's it's a lot of hard work कि आपके नाम क्या के डॉक्टर लगता है. But to get to a point where your name comes, two prefects, a captain and a doctor, I think it's a very rare thing and it requires a little bit of skill and a lot of hard work. Definitely, Ashman, I totally agree with you. And uh, now I would like you to kindly introduce yourself. Please tell us about your background. From where did you do? Did your UG? And if you pursued something else, then kindly tell us. um i did i am from lucknow uttar pradesh so i did my 10th and 12th from here itself uh, post my 12th i took a break i took a drop and initially i got to veterinary and uh, made a veterinary uh, i was into apollo i got us into apollo veterinary college uh, which is in jaipur uh, then i started my ug in 2013 which eventually ended in 2023 so uh, by 2023 i had various options just like all undergraduates do have so i chose to take some time and develop some skill in either ways i had thought ki as a veterinarian i should have some ground working skills and i should have some skills which are applicable on the field so i took some time off learned a lot of work in the clinics eventually by god's grace uh, by april and may we had received the notification for rbc so i was uh, very happy about that uh, post filling the form and submitting it the last date was 5th june from what i remember so after that i uh, thoroughly dedicated my time to uh, the uh, aspects of service selection board and how i could uh, get through it i started going through the current affairs and basic information that i could collect before i took proper and official guidance okay ashwan so ashwan i would like to ask that whether it was always your dream to go to army or it was just a matter of chance that uh, when the notification came you decided that okay now i should also uh, apply for it means uh, some of us have this from the beginning that okay this is the only thing i want to do and some we develop it later so which one are you uh, actually uh, back in uh, when i was even a little kid i was always uh, i always have had an affinity towards the people in uniforms beat army air force and navy so during my internship days i had actually applied for uh, back uh, when i was in my final year of my uh, uh, under graduation I wasn't very sure that we will receive RBC notifications because uh, in the previous years the notifications had been coming on alternative years, like before 23 it was in 21. So and the seats for vacancy were reducing, and I had the dream that I had to wear a uniform, be it Air Force, Army, or Navy. So I had applied actually for an AFCAT exam and I had cleared the written exam. I went for the uh, AFCAT uh, interview. I went for the Air, uh, Air Force SSB selection board at Gandhi Nagar, and I was confident out. But uh, I think everything happens for a reason. do at conferencing out gave me a lot of experience i learned a lot made a new friends the friends i made there gave me a lot of exposure because they were from absolutely different fields they were graduates from iits and iims and it was a different exposure compared to the people we meet in veterinary fortunately 6 to 8 months later i received the notification for rbc and then i felt like it was absolutely made for me the moment i got to know that the notification was out it felt like it was screaming my name out because i was one of the very few people who had given a non a uh, uh, veterinary entry before so i had the experience of it but then to specifically get a veterinary entry right uh, two months i was after i had graduated so i think that was really wonderful 
okay so it means that you are not one of the candidates who just applied for rvc taking it as a job option but uh, you have a passion for army okay so it's good we see the results and uh, it's very happy that a candidate like you who actually aspires gets his dream job okay aishman so the next thing i want to ask is that did you get any guidance for ssb or did you prepare on your own uh initially the afcar car attempt that i gave i uh, more or less had a similar knowledge through youtube and online sources but this time i was pretty sure that the vacancy i was having i didn't want to take any risks with it i wanted to be very sure about it so i took guidance from a, a three colonels which are in jaipur itself so i since i had done my graduation i knew the city well and i knew the people who were running those uh, who were running that academy were really really good at their job and they had a wonderful track record and from what i had known they are pretty much the best in the country they have a set of an interviewing officer a gto and a psychologist and as per my experience and from the people i've talked to they were really really good and they were very encouraging uh, considering how most of the people they encounter are not from a veterinary background they uh, accommodated a space for me and they made me feel like home so i received a lot of guidance from there as well as the right way to understand uh, what is actually the development required for a person to get selected okay so uh, that means you took a guidance in jaipur only so uh, would you like to tell what was the name of the academy ha ha sure sure uh, his its name is invicta defense academy and uh, okay. it's pretty much available everywhere you can google it up they are really good they are really good okay so uh, aishman one more thing uh, i would like to ask as uh, we know we these times have a very common pretext that uh, you cannot get into any job without joining coaching so as you got it and it, it it you know it is good that we take guidance but i would also like you to ask that it uh, is it important that without guidance we cannot crack it because there are some students who cannot take guidance due to many re- many reasons so what alternate options you would like to suggest them and uh, simultaneously so that they can crack this exam without taking guidance some uh, anywhere else Honestly, in today's day and day and age, pretty much everything is possible through YouTube and social media. We have so many channels. We have channels like yours who are guiding our people from our community on so many levels. Similarly, there are many channels on uh, SSB and how the selection process is done. How you will get through every step and every phase of the process. Uh, personally, I tried them. In my personal case, I felt like psychology was a part. Psychology interview as well as the GTO. it requires a level of um, in detail and in depth understanding which i felt i had more uh, complete knowledge of it on a face to face basis when i took the youtube part i had a basic knowledge of it but the basics were not enough cuz right now everybody is really good when you go for the ssb everybody is giving their 200% there are no rookies out there everybody is doing a really good job it's a very good competition you can't say that just because from your veterinary field Uh, you will be taken as a light hearted candidate no it's people are like they are giving everybody giving their best so you can't uh, take that so i had to make sure that i do whatever it is required to clear the board and leave no stones unturned in the process okay so uh, ashman the next question is that uh, while we know that there are after getting screened in okay so first we'll talk about the first day itself So what was the picture that was given to you and uh, how did you make a story out of it what was your story i would like to know uh so um, um my picture was there were four people standing it was a very blurry picture as mostly screening yeah. in pictures they were very blurry so there were four people standing and two boys and two girls from what i perceived in the picture and the girl who was towards uh, the our side was having a backpack and there was a wall behind them so as a candidate who had just left college i made that there were four friends who were planning a trip together for a vacation i didn't make it a very complicated story i just wrote what i felt about it the whatever my first thought was so i just made sure that my character uh, the main person in my story has an aim he has something he has a purpose in his life he has a purpose in the story so i just made that the main character is planning a trip with his friends and uh, just as we do plan trips i get all my friends together i ask them when are you available the possible budget how we are going to stay our traveling our accommodations and then the trip was completed and that was the story and that was the picture okay 
so uh, as there is common perception regarding ppdt that uh, we have to make a positive story ending with a positive note and it should have a message kind of thing so what is your take away to the students who are currently watching you that what should they have in mind while uh, doing ppdt i think it's not about having a positive story but a story which has a which has an aim or a focus or a goal uh, for example uh, like when you wake up in the morning you should have a dream or a goal that you desire like for today i have a checklist i have to achieve these things i have to do the following things if your story does not have a set aim or a focus then it feels very directionless so i don't think it's about positive or negative but it's about having a direction of your character of course it cannot be doing meaningless meaningless things because you are trying to be a person who will be serving for the country and who should have a purpose so it should have an aim i don't think negativity is the right word but yeah aim and a direction is important okay and uh, the objective test which we are giving that is uh, so how did you prepare for that uh there are various books for oir i think we were talking about yeah. officer intelligence yeah i'm talking about oir so there are various books available for it um, even there are various pdfs available for it so i uh, mostly did that even there are various youtube channels who are specifically dedicated to oir practices itself whereas the classes that i had joined back in june july they also gave us a few practice sets which were really really helpful those practice sets along with the online material available helped me a lot so yeah that was it okay Uh, so i would like to tell my viewers that uh, we'll uh, attach all these uh, details in the description box below which you will get later so ashman so now we are screened in <laughs> so now uh, we know that we have to stay for 5 days at the same place and yours was uh, bhopal ssb center i think okay yes. so um what was the strategy now we'll talk about the strategies because now we have came for the selection part because what we do in these days they will decide that what we are getting selected or not okay so now coming to the first day in which we have uh, srt and wat so what were these are psychology test only and as you said that you wanted to get to know more about psychology so i would like you to please tell in detail about what are the ssb takers looking for a person in a psychology test um i think the main in purpose of the entire ssb process as like most of us know is assessment of your oel q that is your yeah. officer like qualities <clears throat> the main purpose is your heart your head your body and your limbs the basic vitals that make a man should be aligned you should not be a bad person that's it they are looking for a person who has a good heart and a soul you should have a little bit of thinking capacity to think under pressure to make your mind work when the time requires it you should have a little bit of courage to do the things that are required and i think that is more or less what is required in your psychology process that is the entire stages of it uh, your picture perceptions your word analysis statements the vat we make the srts and the self descriptions it more or less checks how well you know about yourself how do you respond to situations and how well does your brain respond when it is given a certain image or a stimulus so um i had a superficial idea of it beforehand but then even when i actually got to uh, properly educating myself about it through the classes and various other people i realized that it was more or less how your brain responds at that day on that given picture and what kind of stories it makes again uh, i had the same notions ki mujhe negative story nahi banani hai mujhe positive hi rakhna hai but then i eventually realized that Uh, it's about ki your whatever they have shown what can you make out of it and what can you bring uh, productive to the table what can you make something fruitful out of it uh, like i had a picture in which there's a man standing on a bridge and there's water all around it and there was nothing else no birds nothing just water it did not have anything negative or positive so i chose to make it about a person who is using some time off his work and on his uh, early mornings to uh, do yoga and meditation and improve his physical fitness and improve his mental well being and become a better and more focused person so not always about negative or positive but making something fruitful out of it okay and uh, that's the uh, most interesting part about psychology that it happens very early in the morning so next day it was like 6:30 7 i guess in the morning and we had to report so it's very difficult for your brain to kick in at such an early time in the day but that is what is psychology testing okay so 
uh, as you have already said that there are many channels youtube channels which give us a preliminary guidance regarding all these tests so what they say is uh, this only that you have to make a positive sentence uh, suppose I, if I am talking about the word association test, something like that. So we get some negative words also there. And uh, they, uh, it is a thing that you have to make something positive out of it. And uh, one more I would think I would like to ask that it is not, uh, um, that one cannot complete all the 60 words within the given time. Uh, this is because the uh, time is less, so we could not do all those words. The, the reason why a lot of candidates cannot do all the 660 words is because they think before they write. If you start thinking before you start writing, you will take more time. Yeah. The 60 words have been specifically set up with the time duration that you don't think and write. It's about what you associate with that word in that present moment and the first sentence that come out, comes out of your mind, you write it down. The moment you give it a second thought and you, the moment you start second guessing it, you will miss that word. And that is why they have a set time for every uh, set of uh, psychology testing. The, for example, if there is a word which is negative, you're supposed to find something which either corrects it or brings it in a way which is something productive. Hmm. If, if there is a word which is, for example, uh, murder, let's take enemy. <laughs> okay, you murder. take enemy. So, uh, for example, take, uh, for, we'll go with your word. For hmm. example, we take murder. Hmm. So, right society just uh, right society never justifies murder hmm. or if we bring it in a better statement uh, rightly ma rightly maintained constitution always prevents activities like murder hmm. it might be a bit longer if you can keep your sentence short but yet make sure that you make your mind work to present something which is not supporting those wrong ideas at least that is the bare minimum you can do is not support the negative yes, words. Yes, yes. And of course, leaving them blank is a sign that the person was not able to deal with that stress. I gave you a negative word and you left it blank. That shows that when under actual negative pressure stress, you tend to uh, vanish from the location and you tend to abandon the spot. So it's better to be present and deal with it, I think, rather than running away from it. Okay. Uh, very well balanced answer, Aishman, I, <laughs> I should say. So, uh, were you able to complete all the uh, words? Yeah, um, I was able to complete all the 60 words. I think I missed one word, which was exception, exceptional or exception. And then they had given us our answer key for SRT. So, I kept on thinking about it. And then I uh, remembered that innovators are exceptional thinkers. Mm -hmm. And so I wrote that just before I was about to start my <laughs> start SRT and then I started with my SRT. Okay, so what uh, what should we do in SRT? Best way to tackle SRT? How did you did that? Uh, imagine that you are present there. Uh, for example, if there is an SRT and if you cannot associate yourself with the situation, you will always be thinking as a third person. Make yourself present there. Okay. Uh, a very common SRT is that uh, you were going for an interview and wearing a white shirt and somebody spilled some dirt on your white shirt. Now what will you do? A lot of people will say, Ki, we will not go for the interview itself. So you can always buy a white shirt from the route to your interview, buy another one and just wear that one. Yeah. It's not necessary that your answers are always very heroic. It just has to be practical and something you can do in your real life. Okay. Uh, in my case, I did not attempt all the 60 SRTs. I was barely able to do 35. But I think quality over quantity. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So I used to give a bit more quality answers. and I was a bit skeptical about the number, but I had faith in my practice. Yeah, so it means that practice along with the right thinking. And those, these both things yeah, I, are important. Yeah, I think practice, for especially for psychology, makes a huge part practice uh, is really important for it okay and that practice you are uh, helped through the guidance program you took yeah okay and they were really really helpful about it yeah okay and uh, yes the last part that is self description part so uh, we have uh, 15 minutes i think yeah so uh, um, i i ran out of time in self description I had I had a basic idea of what I wanted to write and I knew what my uh, basic 
timeline would be while writing the self description from starting from myself then my friends then my uh, colleagues and my boss's opinion then what i think about myself so i had a basic streamline plan that these are the uh, values about me that i am very confident about and then i am very sure that i feel about myself for so something like that and eventually it got a bit too long so by the end of it i had to rush it but i think self description is the last part of the uh, psych yeah. psych dossier so by that time the psychologist is pretty much aware of what your positives are and what your strengths are you cannot be trying to fool the psychologist at the last moment that you are something which you are actually not so it's better to stick to what you are in the honesty he has already evaluated your eat and your vat and your srt so he knows ki banda kitna pani mein hai ab yahan pe jhoot nahi bol sakta usko definitely definitely so it's better you keep it at a bit more honest scale that yes i am punctual yes i am hard working but yes i do have uh, issues with my fitness so i try to keep uh, i'm trying to stay fit now and i'm trying to go to running and i'm trying to keep a track of it okay uh, so and in that. self uh, description what i have uh, experienced is that when we sit through the entire timeline which they make us to sit it is uh, really the <laughs> last part and we spill out whatever is the truth okay i think this so if someone has some negative qualities in real which we all have and we want to be honest but at the same time we cannot write those there okay if if uh, feels that someone feels that he is not so much confident in speaking or if he feels that he is he gets influenced by someone very quickly something like that so how should they tackle their self description um i think that is a very big chunk of the ssb process that uh, you're not supposed to fake anything the moment you fake it you'll get caught they are thoroughly professionals and they are thoroughly well trained at what they do and that's why they are sitting at that position so we cannot fake it the whole point of ssb is that you try to transform your personal well being and your personal self weeks and months before the actual ssb happens yeah because the moment you try to fake it that you will eventually get caught uh um, of course everybody has their flaws and nobody is perfect but we need to understand that the qualities required there should be present in just the right amount if they are deficient if you are deficient in those qualities for example effective intelligence courage ability to influence group as you said if you do not have that ability to influence group is checked in your gto if you cannot influence your group to come to a common solution that will be caught you cannot lie about that effective intelligence is when you write that picture and if you cannot think properly you cannot write it if you are writing uh, your srts and there's a problem which requires courage which requires you to take some physical action and you try to step back or you try to get some help then there is a shortage of courage it cannot be produced overnight or in an answer and yes uh, coming to your point psychology psych dossier is approximately it takes a decent while it takes more than an hour approximately 2 hours so it is supposed to be draining it is supposed to be mentally taxing so when the person actually gets there he does not have that uh, self defense that armor so that he cannot lie through his teeth it is designed in a yeah. way specifically to ensure that the candidates cannot lie so the only way to ensure that you do not project your uh, negative traits is to train yourself to not have those negative traits because wo to aayenge jab aap 2 ghanta likhte rahoge na to wo aa hi jate hain bahar aap chupa nahi paoge usko oh. so it's better you handle them cure those issues and it's a, and more or less if you have them accept them and try to improve on it okay so uh, i got a very important point by what you said ashman that we have the time and instead of faking it there we can make it in that time we can improve ourselves Definitely. yes because then we don't we will not need to fake it there okay so this was uh, the takeaway point i think that all the viewers must take that uh, while you have the time for preparation you must change your bad things or you must try to improve them a little bit okay so uh, now moving to our second day so uh, in second day uh, we have uh, gto which is uh, a very important uh, aspect of this ssb exam so how did you tackle the gto aishwan um gto requires uh, GTO, gto has various tests gto is not a single test unlike psych it yeah. has group discussion group planning exercise 
so for you to participate in any group activity and for you to speak on anything you need to have some knowledge and be educated about it uh, like we used to call it quote and quote homework you need to do your homework before you actually sit in the class so if your topic is related to current affairs or international relations or geopolitics whatever it might be if you are somebody who has never touched a newspaper in their life you are bound to be speechless you will have no words yeah, definitely trust me the level of competition we have there everybody does their homework nobody comes unprepared except a very few of course who have taken this as an option the people who are genuinely concerned and serious about this will do their homework um i had a list of things like uh, indo china relationships indo pak relationships how our uh, international relations policy has changed how we are acquiring the how are making moves on the islands in the southern pacific region and southern indian ocean are changing relations with economies of the middle east now these are topics which are very commonly available in group discussions as well as your lecture it so preparing just one page of whatever has happened in your neighboring countries can be extremely beneficial there so uh, again i had some practice over group discussions and how they are held uh the interesting part was whatever practice you hold on a personal level will always be conducted at your convenient time as a uh, veterinary graduates or as people who are working or in college we often get free around 5 to 6 o'clock and then if we want to practice some practice we time pe karte hain but in reality gt happens at 6:30 in the morning where you have absolutely no preparation of how your brain should function that early in those early hours Definitely. so that was a new experience for me so um is your group might be of 7 to 10 people and everybody wants to get recommended nobody is there just to uh, get their time uh, wasted everybody is there to get their own seat so you need to be alert educated and healthy have a healthy competition you have to take a group along with you it's not about you cutting people off you need to give them a chance to speak but also keep your valuable opinions on the respective topic not getting off topic but keeping it for example there is a very common topic about a uh, common topic for group discussion which is uh, the induction of women into armed forces why the number is less what can we do to improve it now this is a topic which has been going on for years you need to have logical points along with recent developments recent additions recent policies just saying that yes women should be inducted is an emotion it's not backed up by logic or facts but adding that yes we have recently had women fighter pilots we have had med doctors being posted into high altitude regions is logic and facts which is going to help you in your group discussion okay that was followed by gpe and as we were discussing olq qualities here comes the ability to influence group you were giving a solution but if the group does not agree with you if you are too hostile or if you are too cutting them off and you are being way too aggressive then nobody likes the person like it just as in life person as a human being which we are aap kisi group mein baitha uski baatein kaatoge na koi aapse baat karne nahi aayega you need to take everybody along with you it's not just about yourself you need to have a personality throughout the process of ssb and before that and after it who takes people along with you so i think that was my key finding okay so yes uh, definitely uh, this is the thing because in uh, group discussions also we see that it generally tends to be a something fish market kind thing that everyone is speaking everyone is trying to keep their points and then someone you know they like uh, they start like shouting uh, so we have to balance the things out so uh, aishman what was the topic you got uh, on the uh, uh, second day of uh, there are two gds there are two gds uh, mm. on the first day the first activity is gd1 and gd2 then yeah. the gpe happens my first topic i think was uh, induction of women into armed forces and okay. why is the number not increasing the way it should and okay. how women can be inducted more into the forces and what is the reason it's not right now so the leads were uh, psychology and physiology then government schemes and social stigma so it's not about the lead you choose but again having the right mindset and having and having logical reasons about it you cannot be saying that uh, uh, i'm choosing this lead i'm choosing social sigma just because i like it it has to have a reason and a logic and a factor i often came across people whom when i asked why do you want to go like why do you want to opt for rvc bill bas bhai pasand hai mere ko to that is not something which gets you through you need to have a concrete reason and logic behind the, what you do 
so i chose uh, psychology and physiology but i made sure that i clearly differentiate that psychology is not an issue women have been posted and women have been on the front lines be it rani lakshmi bai be it the women who are right now in various combat forces like women are playing a major role in artillery and uh, fighter pilots are there but yes when it comes to uh, physiology the bone structure the bone density it is right now a different ball game considering the infantry aspect considering the ground to ground warfare but again i justified it i made logical reasons that it's not about the mental aspect women are way better and way stronger when it comes to mentality and they are way more stronger than men in a bazillion aspects but yes if it comes to physical and brute strength it is a different thing whereas technology is also advancing on it on various fronts to accommodate for it but yeah that was my lead people went with social stigma also they justified that also you need to be comfortable about the lead you choose and you need to put it uh, with logical facts okay yeah uh, this is also one thing i would like to say that they not only give us topic they also give us the uh, things to discuss that you have to discuss on these things also means they are clarity they are mention they are giving you everything and then they are asking you to do well your answer was very nice ashman i must say do you remember the second topic uh i think it was related to international from what i remember i it was i think it was related to international affairs and okay. uh, india india's border policies i am not exactly sure of it i had written it down somewhere but i am not able to write now it involved how india is uh, e- evaluating and re uh, calculating its foreign relations in the last in the last few years we've seen a strong change in our diplomatic policy we've seen a strong change in how uh, we were a soft power diplomacy but now we are managing both we are keeping a balance between soft power and hard power we are maintaining relations with russia as well as america and uh, you being every candidate being aware of whatever is happening the different unions that those are being formed the different associations um, like i2 u2 and india being offered a position in nato and india's various aspects involving china and china's policies expansionist how we are tackling those these come i think really handy in those part of group discussions i think one topic wherever you may participate in gd will always be about india and its external relationships so being aware about that is extremely crucial definitely so then we have the uh, half group task and uh, uh, yeah the yeah, half group task yeah uh, i think it is it is after pgt so yeah, after PGT. the uh, plan exercise the first uh, thing is pgt and yeah. i think pgt is very very important because before this everything that is, has has been happening is verbal yeah and this is the point where you start to actually get physical and you have to physically apply yourself yeah. you have to manage your weight as well as the physical applications of your thinking and this is the part of gto which tests your brain like if you haven't aapne kabhi gaon mein rassi bandhi nahi hai na to wahan nahi bandhegi aap se definitely kabhi rassi ka lot nahi bandha hai achanak se ek din mein nahi ban jayega us din subah subah so i think every person who has worked on a farm or a field who has tied up ropes and knots has an experience and exposure of it and that comes really handy in that aspect i was an urban person i had no experience of it so i of course did some practice on my own back in my room i was not i was not from a rural background but yes um, a pgt involves uh, three or four uh, co- like box shaped structure which you have to come across and it goes of increasing difficulties so once you come on to the next one the difficulty increases again you are a full group at this point so you have a chance to project yourself you have a chance to shine out not uh, being too aggressive or pushing or shoving somebody uh, unhealthy behavior nahi karna hai acha lagna hai but unhealthy bhi nahi hona hai aapko and after that was followed by agt where you split the group into half and then you have the last chance which is actually the individual's last yeah. chance in a group <clears throat> to show how uh, well balanced he is and does he actually have the first set of oil cues required effective thinking logic and reasoning his ability to take stand and apply his brain at the present moment how was your performance uh, means how did you tackle that did you come forward and yourself took actions or you were sometimes helping others at the back or you were always at the front uh, you are you are understanding what i'm trying to ask so the main component of hgt and pgt is rassi valli fatta yeah <laughs> the entire setup falls around that so um, the moment we were introduced to it we were told not to look at it so the moment we started i knew that basic connections will be coming from the fatta so you need to have this idea ki chalo do jagahon pe jahan mujhe bridging karni hai 
you need to have a fatta so i started from that point and uh, the very important part of all gto is it's, it's group task like so you need to ensure that you're being along with your group you cannot just be so giving solutions and running off that is again a person who is just self absorbed and influenced with its its own ideas you need to make sure that at least the person you can accommodate on the next possible structures are traveling with you so my uh, initial idea was ki if i can make a solution i'll make a solution and i'll let the other people go forward before i go myself ahead if i cannot then of course i'll allow other people if i have the idea which is workable and i can allow uh, bridging and i can allow my group to get ahead to the next solution of course i'll try to get because uh, the gt officer always introduces that it's a group problem and you need to solve it as a group you cannot leave the load or your friends behind so if i can let my group progress ahead i think that's a win for everybody okay <clears throat> yes so uh, okay so then i think uh, lecture it happens the same day only uh, lecture yeah, yeah so lecture in that is the last yeah okay you tell lecture was the last of my uh, last component of a gto so i was unfortunately or fortunately i was the first person in my group okay so i was the first one who was supposed to go for the lecture and i was really nervous about that because i had prepared uh, my topics i remember were indo china Uh, e-commerce 5g and i think one was yoga or meditation uh, i had prepared like two or three pages ke notes on different different relationships so mine was i think indo china border issues so i had prepared for it and i had a rough idea um starting from 1947 from our independence and how it has influenced and changed our border relationships throughout the years i had a timeline for it so as soon as i was told to um, go for my lecture i walked a bit too far and then i realized is okay i have gone a bit too far and i was called back the we are given i think 3 yeah, minutes for 3 minutes 3 minutes so um i started off with uh, how our initial relationships were like hindu chini bhai bhai hmm. but then that changed with their expansionist policies and 62 ka war happened where we lost a lot of our men and forces and which was a really big blow for us and when we learned a lot we changed a lot and after that it has been us co- continuously backing them into a corner and continuously learning and making the right adjustments to back them up um, our border policies their expansionist policies like the border road organization they have made and their various attempts to gradually militarize the area in the northeast and the north which we are also countering so these uh issues cumulatively i presented in those 3 minutes and we were given a tap in the last 30 seconds so i also had to give an conclusion to the entire portion and that summarized in about 2 minutes 57 or 58 seconds there was a fraction of a second left when i walked off and it was done yeah uh, mostly it involves uh, there is one or the other topic on international relations so i had Uh, my educated myself regarding those topics so yeah i was comfortable with that okay so uh, now we are moving towards the third day in the uh, third day we have a commander task and uh, individual task so what was how much you prepared yeah. for the individual task and how many tasks did you complete it i did 9 out of 10 i i just ran i used to go to the gym before the ssb happened so i i had to make sure that i was fit on a level okay. that um i could do the basics uh, of course bahut kam individual obstacle karoge to fir to uska regret hi reh jata hai aapko definitely yeah main 10 se do hi kar paya so it's uh, important that you do as many as you can in my case i did 9 uh, uh, when i had gone to bhopal it was 8th september and my uh, gtu was i guess on 10th or, yeah 10th or 11th it was really f- uh, foggy and that dew had collected on all the or uh, individual obstacles so except the balancing beam i had done all of them i knew that if i go on the balancing beam i'll be wasting time as well as i might hurt myself so i was comfortable with uh, letting one obstacle go because i could do the n- other nine rather more comfortably and conveniently so i chose that and um, my command task i was pretty much in the end of the group so i was i guess third last in the group so uh, in my case i was not provided a um, rassi i was provided a steering wheel of a truck okay hmm <laughs> um i started the uh, command task and then through the middle of it i realized main apni rassi bhul gaya kya and then the jeep officer pointed out ki rassi to mujhe mili nahi hai mujhe to steering wheel mila hai 
एंड देन आई टोल्ड माई माई फेलो कैंडिडेट की भाई वो छूट गया वहां से पीछे लेकर क्या जाना हुआ एंड देन फ्रॉम दैट I, for fraction of a second, I got into stress that how could I do such a big blunder? How could I not even collect my materials? Mm. But then I recollected myself, and then uh, I found the solution. In my case, the GTO suddenly did a, a reverse countdown. He told my uh, fellow candidate, who was also my roommate, to start counting from 120 backwards, 120, 190, 180. So I told him, "If this happens, na, bhai, dimi dimi count karna, yar, tez tez mat karna, bhai." So. things happened and i was able to find a solution and okay yeah that was it so it means you uh, you had your ups and downs and uh, still you managed it to clear it means that ye nahi hona hota hai na ki sab kuch ekdam sahi hi ho jaye hai na okay it's a very important part ki aap na you don't lose your cool because something or the other will go wrong it cannot go perfect you are not perfect human being i am sir but you don't lose your composure yeah you lose your composure so you will show ki main to pressure mein toot gaya and a candidate cannot handle pressure at this point how will he handle the pressure at the borders definitely so um, i must say that they are <laughs> they are looking for uh, some very special things um, okay so interview uh, one of the most important parts and uh, it is of uh, approximately 1 hour so how you prepared for it because this is the time when they judge us in almost every way i think because uh, now they say na mansa vacha karma karma yeah and so how yeah. did you prepare for this um i of course i had the guidance the place i went to uh, during the june and july during the initial months when i had submitted the form they had a really really good interviewing officer he was very very thorough Uh, his name is Colonel Rocky Mishra, and he's absolutely, absolutely wonderful. Uh, if you, if anybody does have a chance to meet him or uh, come across him, he is really top notch. Uh, when he interviews you, you will be left with absolutely nothing. He is that thorough. So I did, uh, and the good part is that they tell you to do your research on your own. They do not uh, give you with spoon-fed answers. For example, uh, I had an issue that I was always. Um, i had a liveliness issue factor factor 3 liveliness issue so liveliness is your ability to get back from failures how do you take setbacks and you bounce back from them and stay boying and staying buoyant after tremendous times so those come from changing your perspective towards life my interview started with uh, the piq form which we fill on the yeah. first day your interview has actually begin begin at that very moment a wrong word filled there means you are going to get grilled at the interview definitely so i had practiced the piq form at least i don't know 50 or 100 times or even more i knew the piq form like i could write that in my sleep so by the time i got to uh, my uh, interview it was on the day my uh, gto second day was there so i had just done my individual obstacles So I thought I'll be allowed in my duty uniform, but he asked me to go change up and wear my suit and come back again. So I had to run back, and that got me breathless. So as soon as I entered, he asked me, "Do you want a glass of water?" I said, "No, sir, I'm absolutely all right." He asked me to sit. I took a seat, and then he started with uh, basics like, uh, "Tell me about your uh, bringing. Where do you come from? Your education. Why did you choose veterinary?" And then he asked, "Okay, that's decent. Now tell me, why do you want to join the armed forces? Why do you want to join the army?" and people genuinely struggle to find this answer especially the vets who are coming for rbc because their 50 to 60% their purpose is ki job mil jaye bhai sarkari naukri bilkul bilkul hmm the person who is trying to assess there is a person who is in his mid 40s or 50s he is a very thoroughly practiced and educated person you cannot be saying ki main to desh bhakti ke liye aaya hu sir desh bhakti to har aadmi kar sakta hai yaar you need to have genuine and solid and logical reasons that why do you want to be in the forces you need to have a proper thoroughly and also introspect it cannot be fake i, I gave a reason that uh, sir one of the reasons why i want to join the armed forces it makes no discrimination based on caste creed color or sex be it a woman or a man you go through just as good training as you do be it black white sabke liye barabar rules sabko barabar agda lagta hai koi differentiation nahi hota usme then he asks me questions ki okay if that's the case then why does government release vacancies for different different sections like general ki lag seat aati hai sc ki lag st ki lag so 
why does the government do that if you are trying to counter your point he will get into the logic and reasoning of it you just can't say things because of the whim of it you need to have reasons for it so i said that uh, sir when it is about uplifting the sections of society we really no really do need reservations but if it is about securing our borders and securing the livelihood of millions of people they need to be the best of the best of the best at the borders hum wahan par selection is criteria pe nahi kar sakte wahan par selection is done on the criteria who is the best possible candidate to secure the lives of thousands of people so that's why at borders reservation is not done but everywhere else we choose to give the underprivileged a, a better chance at life okay <clears throat> similarly mostly questions evolved around my piq yeah uh, the thing about interview in ssb is that only that they take your piq and they answer uh, they question about your uh, regular life only but then they judge it they counter it and then uh, it tends to uh, the thing of balancing and how you present yourself okay so i think uh, the moment you try to present a part of yourself which is not really true eventually in the process of one hour he will somewhere or you will find it you will get caught or you will get caught lying both are really bad so it's better not to present an aura and be what you are genuinely so at least you won't be get caught a liar you will be honest with yourself and the person in front of you yes so any veterinary related questions were asked to you yeah i was asked uh, i was asked really simple veterinary questions like um, what is the difference anatomical difference between uh, a cattle and a human okay now everybody who has done their undergraduation is thodi bhi padhai kari has done their anatomy in the first yeah, yeah 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 they can list different aspects of anatomy yeah. and then he asked me uh, he asked me like 10 or 15 differences i started randomly and then i realized ki i am a veterinary graduate let's start from the muscle hmm. in second question i was asked was the dif- uh, the different skin layers of a buffalo skin i am i i knew that part also that is basic histology so everyone knows that uh, you read that in uh, histology as well as medicine so we all knew that those were the two questions basically asked uh to me on the veterinary aspect uh, not on much detail in the theory, theory aspect was asked okay okay ashman so uh, anything which you would like to add that what the candidates must uh, be prepared before going for ssb or what things they should remember uh, while this process um uh, I, i would like to tell everyone that this is not an overnight process it's not the exams we give every year jo ek mahine pehle ho jayenge uh, it's a gradual transformation that happens in your personality and it's a gradual transformation in the virtues of your personality which happens over a period of time you cannot just think that uh, i have filled the form now and i can suddenly bring myself a 360 change you need to inculcate all those olqs those 15 olqs become your life you wake up eat sleep and talk in them once you have your conversation in those values like okay yeah, my my uh, factor 3 is down my factor 2 is down my i need to get my ability to influence group my communication skills should better uh, so these things your determination throughout uh, your interview the most important factors are your determination your confidence your belief your belief in yourself and how well you do know yourself like there is a question often asked about your hobbies and interests Now, he does not have much to gain from those obvious interests but how much of what you say is actually true how much of what you say is what you actually possess you do write uh, your like in my hobbies i wrote astrophysics i wrote weightlifting and reading books and those were three absolutely different aspects from veterinary and they had no correlation whatsoever but i could back it up i was a person who was into going to gym and weightlifting and that was me and i did that in my initial days i was into reading books and novels and uh, i was as a kid always fascinated by astrology and stars and how black holes are formed so that in that uh, the jo- the journey behind those hobbies was not 6 months old but actually years old that really reflected and helped okay so aishman uh, what are the uh, officer like qualities would you like to elaborate about some um uh, officer like qualities uh, basically it involves what is actually required for a person to lead yet never be dominant to inculcate everybody's emotions feelings 
and yet show the correct path which is required you need to have your head in place a person needs to be able to think clearly and have the required intelligence when the time is right when there is a high pressure time and be able to apply that intelligence which is tested in various forms of the testing it is tested in your psych as well as the gto okay you've been given three materials and then how you use that rope and that plank to get across difficult that is where you actually apply your brain they are not seeing how athletic you are they don't require you to jump across buildings they just want to see that if time comes can you carry your men across a ridge using basic supplies available in a jungle you can make a plank out of anything available and you use that to cross that is how you prove your basic intelligence okay the when you are in your group discussions be it your screening group discussion or your gto you are able to communicate yourself you are able to allow people to exchange ideas yet keep your point across get not be very unhealthy ha huh. so like uh, all these um, all these oelqs which are present there are those which are required in real life you don't have to uh, do anything which is fake or made up you just have to be a good person a good person with a pure heart and who has sufficient qualities which can work in the real world okay you are in the battlefield and a person a really good friend of yours a buddy of yours gets shot right next to you do you sulk over it or do you immediately get him the first aid required and get back to your position and do what is required of you you need to be buoyant when the times get tough and yet take care of the people involved you cannot be losing your mind over a simple setback but also manage okay you have a group you have to lead 100 men and everybody has a difference of of opinions now how do you politely and logically convince them to a common goal that is the ability to influence group times get tough it's it's snowy and it, the temperature is minus 30 degrees and yet you never leave your post you stay determined at your position that is determination basic qualities which are required on a day to day basis are your values which are inculcated over time and the people who think the i can you know just show this off the interviewing officer will check how much you are faking and how much you are showing off in one and that's more than enough and if he gets a glimpse of this that you are showing a fake personality he will dig it through and he will dig it to the point that you are caught red handed and he will make you ashamed there which is the worst feeling possible so it's better you don't lie at any aspect of it try to stay honest and comfortable yeah i think all of us have a good heart and all of us have those emotional qualities uh, required to be a good person in the society just be a good human being trying to help out others trying to be there for others yet being focused on your own goals if you can do that and if you can balance that that is pretty much what is requiring decent amount of power of expression not extraordinary you don't need to have a masters in english bas itni ho ki apna baat convey kar pao you can express your emotions you can express what you are trying to say without being too aggressive taking your group along there is a, a part of it called group uh, obstacle race and there is not a better test throughout the ssb which tests your group ability okay seven people 10 people are holding a log आपने कितनों को हेल्प करी चढ़ने में आपने कहाँ से कूदे आपने किसी को छोड़ के आगे नहीं गए यू सपोर्टेड द ग्रुप्स मोरल यू डेंट फॉरगेट अबाउट एनी बडी यू डेंट जस्ट रन ऑफ इंडिविजुअली थ्रू आउट दिस मल्टीपल टेस्ट आर बीइंग कंडक्टेड इवन साइकोलॉजी इफ देर इज अ पिक्चर विच कंसिस्ट ऑफ वेरियस कैरेक्टर्स येट यू राइट अ स्टोरी विच इज बिकॉज योर पर्सनैलिटी इज सोली इफ योर पर्सनैलिटी सोली बेज अराउंड योर सेल्फ योर स्टोरी विल रिफ्लेक्ट दैट स्टोरी विच शोज दैट स्टोरी हैज ओनली वन कैरेक्टर एंड इट रिवॉल्व अराउंड वन कैरेक्टर But you can always add if it's a small boy, you can add the parents because you have parents. You are unconditionally attached to your parents. You have friends. A, a single day doesn't go by. जब मैं दोस्तों से बात नहीं करते. But वो story में बाहर क्यों नहीं आता? That's the issue, and that is what we practice for. And eventually, if you get that portion right, that's pretty much it. Ashman, I would like to ask one more question to you. That after we get selected, so it is a very happy feeling, obviously. So. what happens after that what is the process what is the training time of rvc candidates uh, immediately after you get recommended you actually go for medicals which take approximately 1 week to 10 days but once you've cleared your medicals you um, get into your merit list or as per the number of recommended candidates then the training happens at remount veterinary core training center which is at meerut the training is officially of 19 weeks or approximately 5 and a half months uh, it often takes a bit a week more than that because of the passing out and the documentation but officially uh, the, the training is of 19 weeks or 5 and 1/2 months at meerut veterinary core center yeah okay so after the training will be completed then you will be recruited to the places uh, 
Yeah. Okay. Uh, the the interesting thing about uh, RBC is that you are often uh, the training occurs not as a candidate but as a young officer. So you will your training will occur not as a cadet or as a gentleman cadet, which is the which is the case in NDA and IMA. Your training will occur as a young officer. So you will be trained as an officer ranking and posting, and you will be posted as an officer. So from the training phase itself, you will be holding your uh, rank status, which will further get implemented and executed once you are given your uh, postings, which are throughout various locations in the country. Okay, so as the, this is a short service commission, so after how much time can we apply for permanent service commission? So oh, it's five plus nine, so it's five years extendable by nine years. So once you have completed your five years, based upon your performance and also your choice. You will be assessed by them on the limited seats available for the upcoming nine years. The total service for short service candidates is of 14 years, so that is five plus nine. If you have done your annually, uh, your written exams well, your physical performance has been well, your throughout execution throughout the years has been very consistent, and you have been a very well performing officer, you will be a point for the upcoming more nine years, which makes in total the duration of remand veteran equal to be 14 years. Okay. So uh, one thing more, I would like to ask that uh, what is actually an RVC personnel does in army? Uh, a lot of positions are held by RVC, RVC personnel. Uh, as you go to the senior ranks, it also involves administration works. But at younger ranks, it involves breeding of dogs and horses. There are various uh, stud farms and also dog training kennels and various other facilities, which also involve us using mules at high altitude positions. Even at Siachen glaciers, mules are used for transport of various goods. Uh, the aspect involving horses, mules, and dogs is thoroughly balanced and maintained. The training of canine units, even uh, if you are in cases when somebody is a very well performing officer, they are even given deputation duties in NSG. And canine units through even uh, president's uh, guard in the the special section of armed forces which provide security to president and their uh, entire system are also supplied uh, canine units from remount veterinary corps which is taken from exemplary officers and their performances. So the scope for veterinary officers after joining RVC is also ex enormous. You can go and be in one of the very highly dedicated positions in the veterinary service also. Okay. So uh, this was very insightful because बहुत सारे लोगों को ये बात पता नहीं होगी मतलब जो apply कर रहे हैं उन्हें भी शायद ना ही पता होगा उन्होंने सही से if they have not researched well candidate with me who told me about कि if you have your height above six feet आप president's bodyguard में भी apply कर सकते हो अगर आपने बहुत ही अच्छा performance दिया है then you can apply for president's bodyguard तो उसमें जो canine security आती है और उसमें जो RBC के officers आते हैं but you need to be like सोला बंदे गए तो उसमें से आप number one पे हो क्योंकि एक ही seat है आयुष्मान तिवारी for uh, agreeing to this interview within such a short span of time maine kal hi unse baat kari aur wo turant hi taiyar ho gaye so thank you so much aishman for uh, being with us and helping many veterinary students who aspire a career in rvc through your very motivational and uh, well balanced and true words i must say so with this i would like to uh, end this conversation Everyone please like share and subscribe to Vet Study channel and also press the bell notification get the notifications on time <laughs> Thank you so much So this is all for today I hope you all enjoy it so have a great day guys bye bye